Glover. Today we have a great interview with the starting pitcher of Colorado Rockies, Ryan Feldner. Uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow, so probably you are starting the game. So how do you feel? How's the process for your preparation for the game? Yeah, it feels good. Um, you know, I got everything done this week that I need to get done in between uh, in between starts and just saw Philly a couple weeks ago. So looking forward to being back out there again tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, we want to know about your um, the beginning, okay? When you start to play that beautiful game. So when did you start to play? I was four years old. I started really young. So my dad played baseball in college and, um, you know, from playing catch in, at an early age in the front yard. Uh, and then uh, four years old is when I started. And from there, it just uh, it became my favorite sport slowly. Uh, there was basketball and football were involved as well. But uh, by the time I hit high school, we just focused on baseball. So you say your your father played in college, baseball. Baseball, yeah. So so he he was the, the most important person when you were starting to play? Yeah, he was. He was the one that introduced me to the sport, um, you know, when when I was growing up, uh, we had we have a lot of memories going to the field every weekend, and um, so he was definitely the most instrumental part in, in me playing baseball today. So, and you say you play uh, basketball and football too. So, what did you uh, choose baseball? Yeah. So uh, in football, I didn't like getting hit very much, so that that was an easy choice. Um, basketball was pretty good, but decided that uh, my talents were more suited for baseball. So. Um, you know, once I turned, once I was a freshman in high school, we, uh, I just decided to focus on baseball. So, uh, what about the, the power in your arm? So you were born with that or you practice? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I, I have longer limbs. Um, and, but I, I practiced a lot on my mechanics growing up. And, um, like I said, just from playing catch with my dad in the front yard, I think, uh, I threw so much as a kid to, to where now I feel like my arm is uh, somewhat resilient to that. So um, it's been built up, but I was also, I think, born with a little bit of natural ability. Uh, and what did you learn about the different kind of pitches? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's kind of been a, an evolving process as I've gotten older. Um, you know, I saw my same change up grip from when I was nine years old, um, but all the other grips have changed and So it's, it's just about learning and making adjustments when necessary. Um, I'm always trying to learn from other guys on the team and growing up, I, I was always watching YouTube videos on how other, you know, professionals were uh, throwing their pitches and whatnot. So just, it's just about what works for you. And uh, I ended up settling on some grips that are, are working for me. Got it. So uh, please, can you show us your different kind of pitches in the camp, please? And you can maybe explain a little bit about the pitches. Uh, so this is the first thing fastball here. I just try to stay behind the ball, um, making sure both fingers are coming off at the same time um, for more efficient spin. Here's my sinker. It's a one seam grip. So when it comes off my fingers, the one seam splits the middle of it and creates some sink. Um, so that's the sinker. Change up is kind of right off of that. Um, I feel a split between these two fingers. Those come off first and then the middle finger sets the axis at the end. This is a more complex pitch, and uh, it's best when I'm throwing a lot of reps with it. So the uh, previous couple of years, I didn't really have it. But once I started to play catch with it more often, it, uh, it came back pretty quickly. And then slider is just an offset four seam grip. Um, I don't think this way too much with it. I kind of just think that way and uh, pulling down that back kind of bottom quadrant of the ball. And then curveball is right here. Um, this is always a work in progress. I change this grip a lot. So uh, it's hard for me to get to the front of the ball on a curveball just with my slot. So I'm messing with that all the time. But oh, Amazing, your arsenal, okay? Yeah, yeah congratulations. So uh, how, how do you work your mind when you are a starting pitcher? Because everybody sees you, you know? How do you work your mind? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, it's different. I, I came out of the bullpen a little bit in college. Um, that's just a short burst. You know, you know you have one or maybe two innings in you. Uh, that's a different mindset. Um, as a starter, I try to have that same mindset every inning um, and just reset in the dugout in between innings. I almost like to, you know, space out a little bit and uh, get my mind off of what I'm doing um, so that I can be as focused as I can on the mound. So you have to uh, you have to sustain your focus, but it's a uh, it's a process that I like and I love starting. So um, wh what about the altitude to pitch in the altitude? What, how do you feel? 
Yeah, it's different. You know, I think a lot of people would tell you just not to think about it or uh, maybe just just do your normal plan. But I think uh, I think you definitely need a, a, a different plan. Um, it's a challenge. The outfield's big. The ball flies here. But I think as long as you're living down, I throw my sinker a little bit more here. Um, a little more thought goes into it, but, you know, it's I, I've gotten used to it pretty quickly. So I think it's, uh, you know, I don't look at pitching here as any different than pitching anywhere else anymore. So, um, for example, when you are pitching cruise field, so it's about the aerobic, you know, or it's about the, the ball move different? It's both. Uh, you know, when you run over to cover first base, a lot of times you got to fake tie your shoe or something to get time out. So, um, yeah, it's it's a little bit taxing on your body, uh, but it's also, I think the main component of it is the pitch movement. Um, I think you get something like 85% of your pitch movement here. So it's just about setting your sights um, a little bit different. Um, it's easier to throw strikes here though. So, I mean, your pitches move less, so they're in the zone longer. So there's some positives to it as well. So uh, now we want to talk about the, the baseball college, you know, so American people love uh, baseball college. Yeah. So you study in, in Ohio, yeah. that's correct? So uh, how, how was the baseball college for you? It was great. I went to Ohio State. Uh, it's, you know, the biggest college in the state that I grew up. Um, you know, I grew up in Kentucky and Florida as well. But being in Ohio as a kid and going to Ohio State was definitely a dream. And, um, you know, I think I got better there. And it was a good experience. I really liked it. So uh, what did you study? I studied strategic communications. So uh, it's just a form of business. So uh, maybe in the future you're going to work in that? Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, I, I've never really known exactly what I wanted to do after baseball. You know, I think I, uh, I've acquired so much knowledge about pitching that I, you know, I'm slowly starting to think that maybe I would be a good asset uh, and be able to help people out in the pitching department as far as, you know, I, just because I've acquired so much knowledge, I wouldn't want that to go to waste after I'm done playing. So um, I'm not sure. I'd be open to a business job, but I'd also like to stay in baseball. So we'll see where it takes me. In your opinion, what is most difficult in college baseball? I think the balance between school and and on the field. Uh, you know, we had really good tutors at Ohio State, so they helped me a lot. Uh, just be able to focus on what I needed to do on the field. Uh, but I think that's the biggest hurdle for most guys, and uh, it is tough. But I always knew that baseball was what I wanted to do, so I put most of my effort towards that. Um, school you know I, it took care of itself and I did well but uh, I, I would say that's the toughest part so, Mr. Ryan I'm gonna tell you some special days in your career okay. uh, and you're gonna tell me what do you remember okay. okay so what about the day when you signed yeah. your first contract yeah uh, that was here at Coors Field I was lucky enough to come here uh, to sign and you know being fresh out of college that was uh, that was pretty cool I remember walking up the steps here into the dugout and looking around at the stadium and just being kind of enamored at how big it is. And uh, but but that was a great day. That was a really cool day. What about your debut in MLB? Yeah, um, that was a good day as well. You know, I was here at, Co at Coors Field and uh, the results weren't what I wanted. But to have my family here and, uh, you know, that was just an incredible moment. You know, so much went into getting me to that point and uh, definitely an emotional day and one I'll always remember. Your first a strikeout. First strikeout, yeah, that came in my second start. I didn't get one in my first, but uh, yeah, that was that came in Philadelphia. That was that was good. That was, you know, it helped me settle in a little bit because I, I like to get strikeouts. And I think I'm a power pitcher uh, when I'm at my best, so uh, that was that's always going to be a good memory. So, did you miss too bad? Uh, did I what? Too bad. Did you miss too bad? Uh, no, I. You know, I. <laughs> in high school, I was a good hitter. Uh, but then I faced Aaron Nola in Philadelphia and realized I wasn't going to be able to hit anything that's not straight anymore. So um, it's definitely fun, and, and that was a really good experience to get in a uh, major league at bat. It was it was cool, but I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> so uh, what about your experience in minor league? Uh, so some players say that it's really, really hard. What about your experience? It's tough. It's difficult. Um, you know, they... The, the conditions are getting better, the facilities are getting better, the pay is getting a little better. So hopefully guys have it a little bit easier than I did. And I, I think my experience was great too. I think the Rockies did a great job, um, but it is a grind because that's you know ultimately not where you want to be and you want to work through that as quick as you can, but it's important to stay in the moment and just enjoy the process. So 
Um, you know, I have friends from the minor leagues that I'll see up here soon that, you know, we'll be friends for a lifetime. So uh, it was a great experience for me. So what about uh, your experience in, in Hartford, you know, in the north? So because you are a guy from Florida, so it's, it's too cold yeah. there. What about your experience? Uh, Hartford was really cold. You know, I think uh, growing up in Ohio, I kind of am used to that. Uh, but Hartford was cold, and it was it was a, it's a beautiful park there, though. It's a really beautiful park, and I really enjoyed my time there. That was one of my uh, one of my favorite places to play in minor league baseball was Hartford. So, uh, my friend, thank you so much for your time. We are finished the the interview almost. So we're gonna know right now about uh, your hobbies. So, uh, what do you like to do when you are not playing baseball? I love being outside. I love being in nature, and Colorado is a perfect spot for that. Um, I haven't gotten to explore too much around here yet, but I'm looking forward to doing that. Golf is a big one for me. Um, yeah, I just I love being outside. I love golfing and spending time with my teammates. What about your favorite food? Favorite food? That's a tough one. Probably steak. I like steak a lot. Burgers, um, just meat. Yeah, I, I love I, I love that type of stuff. Italians up there too. You know I. I'm a skinny guy, but I eat a lot, so I'm trying to uh, trying to keep weight on. But yeah, probably steak. So if if you like pizza, so if you have the opportunity for for prepare your your own pizza, what do you add? Well, you know, I think that would be pepperoni, onion, and green pepper. I think that's what I'm going with. What about your favorite number? Uh, favorite number uh, is probably 14. That's Tovar's number now. Uh, that was my number throughout the minor leagues, but when I debuted, I got 18. And that's a great number, too. So 14 and 18 are my top two. And then did your color? Uh, favorite color? I think it's always been blue. Pretty basic, just blue. So uh, are you a superstitions player? Uh, not really. I you know, I used to be, but I think the, the older I've gotten, the more I realize that I don't want to rely on a superstition. And um, you know, I want to be able to just do my thing every day and not have to have it be the exact same thing. So. Um, generally, I'm not superstitious, but I used to be. Yeah. So some days when you, sometimes you know you you, you don't have a, a great day. How do you feel for the next day? Yeah, uh, it's tough. That's the toughest thing about baseball is there's there's ups and there's downs, highs and lows, and it's uh, it's tough to bounce back sometimes. But I think the most important, like the most important thing, the best players bounce back the quickest. Um, We have a lot of guys on the team that you'll see them the next day after a bad outing and they're the same guy. Um, I think for me it's just knowing that there's always going to be that next opportunity and, and when it comes, be prepared for it. Um, it's natural to have bad days, and I think that, you know, I'd be silly to think that I'm not ever going to have another bad day. So uh, just being able to flush it as quick as I can is the biggest thing. Yeah. So uh, this is my, my last question. So please, can you tell us a, a message for every kid you know that they dream to come uh, uh, be a, a MLB player like you yeah um, it's a tough road it's a tough journey I think everything you do has to go into it um, every decision of my childhood up up through college you know kind of relied on what is going to be the best decision for me to get to the big leagues and some things you'll have to miss out on um, But I think the reward is worth it, and I think that uh, it's not easy. It's not ever going to be easy. Even once you get here, it doesn't get any easier. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's you know, I'm glad that uh, that I had those games to catch with my dad in the front yard as a kid to get me to this point. So um, you know, I think uh, just keep pushing. You know, it's never going to be easy, but it's it's a lot of fun. Hey, Mr. Ryan. So thank you so much for your time. So uh, good luck in your career. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for el periodista Abel Flores acreditado para cubrir el gol de grandes ligas desde Colorado para el mundo y te invito a seguirme en mi cuenta Amantes del Béisbol 2021 donde encontrarás contenido exclusivo, entrevistas informes, reportajes comentarios exclusivos de nuestros peloteros grandes ligas de Venezuela República Dominicana, México, Puerto Rico, Panamá. Un contenido exclusivo que no encontrarás en ninguna otra plataforma, ni en televisión, ni en radio, ni en prensa. No esperes 
el noticiero de la noche, no tienes que leer la noticia del día de ayer, en esta plataforma multimedia te brindamos toda la información, amantes del béisbol 2021. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game.